Okay, now let's assume we hadn't done anything with our layout so far. I'm just going to delete this layout just so we can take this right from scratch. Okay, so we've finished all our model space work. We go to our layout. Okay, generally a viewport will be added for you, but it's added it on layer 0 because that was the current layer. Now say there was no viewport there either. Okay, let's go right from scratch. Have we got a layer to hold our viewport? We don't at the moment. So let's create one. So new layer. Viewport. Spell it right. And give it a horrible color. So it's nothing like anything else on the drawing. And make it non-printing. So we use the non-printing icon. non-printing layer viewport doesn't have to be current while we're here let's make another layer sorry about this the dialog box is just going a bit crazy create another layer and call it titles this does want to be black so we choose the color 7 and it will be printing so make sure the printer icons available for this one and you can make this current Okay, let's make a viewport for ourselves. MV return. Click and drag to create a viewport. Now, we haven't chosen the size of paper yet, actually, so we should do that as soon as possible. So, page setup manager, modify, change the printer. I'm going to choose a PDF just for this example, and I'll choose an A3 piece of paper. We're plotting the layout at one to one. Pen assignments should be black and color. Then everything's okay. And close. Now resize your viewport. Just click it once, click the grip in the corner. Then go and put the viewport onto layer viewports. Should change the edge to purple. It's a bit difficult to see on this it is purple okay then go into the viewport so you double click inside and then double click your middle mouse button to zoom extent then we want to set the scale I'll use the zoom command for this so Z return and we've got to see what fits so Z return 1 forward slash let's start at 500 XP so 1 forward slash 500 XP gives us a 1 to 500. That's a bit small. So let's try a 1 to 250. So Z return 1 forward slash 250 XP. That's looking better. I can see the trees. I can see the road. I can read the heights on the contours there. It's all looking fairly legible. Okay, double click outside or click the model button here to go to paper space so this shows you the current mode that you're in use zoom all so Z return a return to fit your paper to the screen okay we're missing a layer here and where shadows for our buildings aren't visible so I'll turn on the size shadow build all right now I'm gonna zoom in in the bottom corner I'm going to check which font is in use at the moment. So use the use the ST command. It's short for style. So ST return. It's using Arial for standard text. Let's create a new style and we'll call it titling. And I'd like to use the font to Homer instead. Not that much different to Ariel, just a wee bit more elegant, I think. Leave the height set at zero, and if you want to squeeze in a bit more text, you can make it narrower, so 0 0.9, 0 0.8, alter, all, or a bit wider, 1.1, 1.3, etc. But I'm happy with that, so I'll apply that and set current and close. Okay, so use the for simple bits of text, use DT, dynamic text, DT. 
we pick a start point for the text and I want the, space, the, the height for this text for my main title to be 5 millimeters. I don't want the rotation to be anything but horizontal so press return okay site plan as proposed and I'm going to type in the scale now scale 1 to 250 at A3 so if the drawing's on A3 the people know they've got it to scale if it's not an A3 they're holding in their hand it's not going to be to scale now this is a subtitle so it shouldn't be the same height as this one so you can use your change command just CH return should bring up the properties box I'll bring it onto the screen so you can see it and I can just see the piece of text here as well so I'm just going to click it once and I can change the height to say 3 millimeters. then close that so you get this kind of hierarchy in the text which looks rather elegant ok so I'm just going to use ortho just to move that up a wee bit and then place both of them more comfortably on the piece of paper ok don't worry about the text hanging over the viewport as long as your text isn't outside the dashed line everything will be ok ok now we've got a road here so let's put a bit of text on the road so DT ok pick a start point the height doesn't want to be the same as the main title for the drawing so maybe 3.5 for this rotation angle this is where I actually try and line up with the road and I'm going to type in the words main highway and put that there this car looks like it's parked, so I'm just going to move it out a wee bit. That's better. Okay, and then we'll put in some more titling. So DT, I'll use smaller text now, I'll use 2.5. So I'll start my text here, height of 2.5, return, rotation 0, return, and I'm going to have, I'll write paved driveway. keep the command running. I haven't finished the command yet. I just move around and pick another start point. I'm going to type gravel path. Move in a bit closer. Roof of house. And here we have courtyard. Don't worry about text overlapping just now you can move it around later I'm going to mark a position here so people know where to go into the house in okay now that you could carry on adding lots more information to describe how you've designed or what you, you know what you're trying to say here once you've finished just press return and return again and the text is logged now you can zoom in and tidy up positions of text it only takes a few seconds and can make a big difference if things are lining up okay now you can if I wanted to line these up exactly if I drew a line from the insertion point of one of them and take it through I can then move this one using its insertion point and take it to perpendicular to that line okay we'll do the same here use the insertion point of this one and take it perpendicular to the line it takes a couple of seconds but it's worth worth spending the effort okay let's do a plot preview The final look of the drawing. We've got nice light, dry, nice kind of line hierarchy. The shadows. If you thought the shadows were too dense, you exit the plot, and cancel, and because we're using a CTB file, all we need to do is change the colors of layers. So, tree shadow, 
just take it up a notch and building shadow wants to be the same 254 as well try another plot preview and you know it makes quite a difference doing that okay that would be the drawing ready to print and off it goes just cancel the plot preview just now so escape and cancel and one block that we forgot to put in was a north arrow so insert insert browse we should have north point on here somewhere I thought no we don't we're gonna draw our own okay so we'll just quickly draw our own north point a nice simple one you can use is to draw a polygon and we'll use a three-sided actually we'll draw a circle first draw a small circle and then a polygon inside that circle of three sides the center of the polygon will be the center of this circle it will be inscribed so you press return and the radius of the circle if you use the quadrant Q U A O snap you can pick that position and then what I could do is copy this piece of text to there and mm, double clicking it allows you to change the piece of text I'm just going to write the word north and then move it slightly in that fashion I might put these this onto a different color just to make it print slightly lighter so if I use my properties which is just off the page here unfortunately and bring it here just place it there I'll change it to color red and that will look fairly tidy when it prints